Dorothy here with Done by Dorothy, and we are here today um, working on our Maribel Nature album, or journal, and we're working on our second signature, um, you know, just to throw everything out there so everybody knows what's going on. I did pull some of the items I'm going to be using today um, and have them sort of out, so try to speed up the process. Um, again, the Maribel Nature the journal pages for this set I will link down below and um, we already have the linked images if you need them the extra images um, was in the video from yesterday so I'll make sure I card it and link it too remember to like comment subscribe um, and tell your friends all that kind of thing so we're gonna get with it and get this done um, so move on um we have our little cards and again these are so colorful that i think i don't want to do anything with this i think this one um since it does say about trees and stuff we'll leave it on there because we already have this to journal on there so i think we're okay on that side then we have our tree so we're gonna pull out our tree and do our tree like and it is lopsided because you know, one's on one side, one's on the other. Instead of splitting in the middle, I put it to the side so I could get the part of the trees on there. So I'm going to set this out of the way. And I did do a mock-up of the tree. And um, this is what it's going to look like when it's done. So we'll get with it. I'm going to pull out just a white piece of... This is just um, plain one ten pound cardstock that I'm just going to use to sort of paint it or to use it on. Now I do need some water. We are going to be using watercolors. Um, I tried. I mean, I tried with colored pencil. Colored pencil did okay. It just wasn't my favorite. That and you know, again, that's just me. I have. Um, this is Royal Lang Nickel. It's just a simple little watercolor kit. I didn't get my big one out. This is just a little the sort of basic generic -y type kit, although it's not generic. Um, and I think I got this for like $4.99 at Meyer. So, you know, Meyer, Walmart, you can get a very small set for a little bit of nothing. It's worth getting and having in your craft stash if you do not have it. Um, let me move this out of the way. And then I picked this little palette up. It, it was in my thrift store for 25 cents. Um, you do not have to have this palette. Like this one that I got and most of them you buy has, you know, a little palette on the back that you can use if you need to. So you do have that option. And I'm going to need green and brown. my brown. Let me grab my greens. There's actually two color greens. And I'm going to need my brush. And I'm going to use just a, a number five. And this is, like I said, a Royal Lang nickel. And you could use, I mean, pretty much any kind of brush works. <clears throat> so, before we get started I'm trying to find my pencil. Um, let me see. I got a pencil in my jar here somewhere. Yep. I was picking things up. Not that it looks like it now because I've been pulling everything out to have it sort of here when I need it. So I'm going to pull out my pencil. I'm going to, just so I don't have to think when I go to paint, um, I'm going to pull it out and sort of. I know that I want to use the part about trees, so I'm just sort of going to box that in where I want to, you know, keep that uncovered, sort of to draw attention to that one square. And so, what I'm going to do, I am going to grab my Tim Holtz Distress Ink that we're using today on everything. is going to be a vintage photo, again, and I'm just going to make sure I ink up my edges.
because I managed to ink one side up and apparently it didn't ink this side up. I don't know what. I was, got the other side. Just not the side over here. So. And I make sure I do a pretty good coat. And we'll ink again before we're done. So, so my ink over here to the side. Okay. So, I'm going to pull more water here. This is really old um, paper. It's sort of delicate, but I'm just going to sort of wet it down really good. All but I'm not going to worry about like where my trees is at because I sort of don't want anything. there, And it's going to look the distress ink is sort of going to, you know, carry across there and that's fine because when we add the paint, you're not really going to notice that anyway. And I'm not even worrying about being perfect with the water, obviously, because I'm just trying to make sure everything's wet really good. So it's sort of already creating that distressed, leaked in type from the edges. Okay, then one of these, this one's not opened. And I do have um, a pack of baby wipes. And these are actually baby wipes that I got from the Dollar Tree. So, I mean, they're not anything extravagant. Just a little of my green paint out. And again, these are little tubes. You can buy the bigger tubes, um, you know, or you can buy watercolor pencils if you don't want to deal with paint. Um, yeah, sort of to each his own, I guess. That's a bit oozy. I don't know what was up with that. Okay. So we're brown and two colors of green. And again, I am not a professional painter, so... If I do something and you're going, what in the world is she doing? Probably. Okay. So, I know right along in here. Oh. Dark with my brown. I guess I'll start down here. And I'm just... Again, I am not going to worry about it. I'm just going to coat it. And I know you guys are first are going, what in the world? I promise you. It'll work. And I'm trying to put sort of a base thick coat on right now. I sort of like to let it bleed into the paper for a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to take my baby wipe. So I'll just create an edge. I am just going to sort of So it's not as dark when the green hits it. Okay, so see how wet that is. Maybe I should put it down a little bit more. Let me use a little water on my brush play. And this is a bright green, and I'm gonna go right to the edge. I'm not gonna worry about where I inked.
And then because I'm going to box this corner in over here, I'm going to pull that down through there. That probably looks weird. You're gonna have to go. What in the world? I would never have done that. I'm just trying to clean up where my And I used some different things, but I really liked the way the watercolor did because I really liked the fact that the text behind it. Okay, so now I'm going to dip into my dark here. And I'm just going to randomly sort of and again I'm not trying to like make it completely look professional like you know I mean I want it to look good but I sort of like that touch of playfulness you sort of get that innocent children's look like with the um the frog and you know his little tongue and stuff we did I thought that was so cute okay And see, I've got that with that light underneath of it, so let me dry my brush out here. And then I'm going to use my baby wipe I've been using anyway. And because it's a tree, you know, I can pick up some of my brown on the end and don't want to do it that much. To create little branches throughout there. That one's really big. I don't really care for it, but we will cover it up. And we'll grab some of our dark and just sort of Some of the lighter green over top some of that okay now I'm gonna get 
actually got three. Okay, then I'm just going to sort of wad that up like that, and I'm just gonna, not a lot, just, I'm gonna take everything off, but. one down and then I'll sort of dab the brown and by doing that I'm sort of releasing that text underneath okay now gonna take my baby wipe like mine long wise I'm gonna fold it in half <clears throat> fold it in half again again I'm gonna create like a about a two inch area Fold over so it's extra thick so And fold that over so it's gonna be about that thick. I'm gonna grab my tear roller and I'm gonna find a really good area. Um, sort of buried, I don't want it all the same, so like right in here. And I'm just gonna wrap my baby wipe over that and sort of hold it where it's tight, where you can sort of see the points. You know, and you can sort of rub it if you don't, you don't rub it too tight because you'll flip it through your baby wipe. But where you can see your points, and then I'm just gonna sort of, if I can do it without my other points getting in the way, let me just cover them all. Change of plans, let's just do it this way, and that way I'm not, and then I'm just gonna make little circles, and I'm just gonna do that on the top. Okay, and by doing that, it just sort of creates little, like, pivot areas. And then I'm going to do it again. Oh, that's too thick. I'll just do it this way. And then I'm going to do it down here. Come on. I'll do it on the end. This may be a little too dried to do it. I don't know if you can see like even where the little curls are over here. It does that in your tree. And so it sort of creates this really barky type look. So I'm going to pick this up off my paper, just to separate it because I want it to dry and harden. I'm going to set that paper to the side. I'm going to take my tree, let me find, I think I'm going to paper here. Oh, I'll just grab one of these. And I'm just going to set it on top of here. I'm going to set it to the side, go ahead and decorate everything else, and when we come back it'll be dry. But we're going to set that to the side now. Okay, let me get my container of water put over here so I don't spill it anywhere. Let me sort of move this out of the way. Okay. Okay. So we're going to leave our tree up there and let it dry. Move the next. Okay, we have this. 
and I actually pulled, I thought this would look really cute together. Except no, my stapler is over here. So I'm going to pull this out so I, I can work on it. I'm going to decorate this side and then I'm going to decorate this side. I'm going to leave, or no, I'm going to decorate this side and this side. I'm going to leave the out, this side and this side, I think. Yes. Let me put this up here out of the way. So we're going to deal with this side first. And I actually have this like faux suede. I thought I had that real naturally look to it. I really liked it. So I'm going to grab my ink, sort of ink the edges so it's not so the edges where it's cut. It, you know, they sort of have that, a, I don't know, a lighter tone. So I'm just going to sort of darken it up a little bit. And then I'm going to put some glue on it here, but I'm going to, this part, I actually cut it about an inch bigger so I can flip it around so it sort of creates a little tab off the side of it. I thought that would look really cute. So let me grab my fabri -Tac. I'm going to put a little bit here so that it glues that side down. And then I'm not going to worry about some of that because I'm going to actually put a staple through it to Hold it. I just want to at least put a little bit of glue on there so it adheres and doesn't, you know, end up turning on itself and folding on itself and all of that. So I'm going to leave a little gap so it's not in the seam where it folds so it doesn't balk the seam up anymore. And then I'm just going to pull this over here. And sort of fold it and it's not cut exactly straight I didn't really care if it was cut straight okay so there's that piece of white lace it's actually like the fold that was the bottom of the trim of the hem of a curtain so it was a lace curtain this was the top part and I just cut the little section off because that unfolds and creates a whole nother a little layer so I wanted to use that put just a little bit of fabric tack there just to hold it in place enough till let us sort of layer everything up and I'm gonna just sort of put it on the diagonal makes everything better. Oh, like orange. I'm going to glue it on and I actually dripped water on it when I was watercoloring but I think it actually adds to it a little bit so because it actually gives like a green undertone where it fell um where I had printed on the printer and it's an orange or like half of an orange And then I will grab my tiniest, tiny attacher now that everything's on here. Just right to the edge of that orange where it's at. Um, so make sure I catch both sides. Yep. And just right to the edge so it sort of looks like it's stapled down even though it's not just to give it that different look. So there's our little orange on that side. We have our side over here to write on. Our side here to write on. And then we're going to decorate the back here. Um, because it's going to be folded over this way. So let's flip this way. And I actually, you know what, I think I was going to put, let me see something. Yeah, I think I was. Well, we'll leave that 
that's what I put this side I'm going to do. I actually found some green, um, it's just like the really thin designer scrapbook paper that you have that's like in the pads that you buy at like Walmart or whatever and it was like just a sort of a gradient of a green and I really like that and I have this old piece of music so I thought I would let me put my lid back on my I actually wanted to I was going to do it on both of them and had to, but I think I sort of want to leave that blank where there's a little bit of writing room with the lines I don't want to take away all of that let me ink this up ink before you glue music I actually found so I thought I would throw it in here because it was just a little bitty section it wasn't enough to really do anything with I mean I could cover a tag or something with it but I sure thought it'd be really cute to do in the background over here and I'm gonna turn it this way here I want to sort of leave some of the music there do I want to go yeah I want to go on the inside so grab my tear roller here and I don't want the bottom to be straight I don't want to lose all that color either so I'm going to come up just a little bit off the bottom if I can get a hold of it Ink those edges up. to say that a little dab will do you if you're older. You know what that is? Okay, I'm going to sort of leave some of the metal over here at the edge. There we go. So that'll give you a little place to sort of journal with some color. Okay. Let's turn it over and do the back here. Back up. Oh, no. I'm... Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is because this is yellow. So I'm gonna put my streak of glue down the middle. Not a lot, just a little ziggy zaggies. And I'm gonna use my washi. And this is just a yellow polka dot of washi that I'll try to show you. If I pull it out, you might be able to see it better. It almost is like I don't know if you can see the little holes, it almost looks like a lemon peel type thing. And so I have a lemon, so I'm going to use it. Put a little bit too much there. Let's pull this just uneven at the top a little bit. Oh, it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to be covering it up. And it doesn't even have to be straight. It's just to add a little pop of color. And again, I have my washing box right there, so it was really easy just to grab. Okay, and then I'm just going to throw some glue on here. It doesn't really matter where, just I need some glue to hold it down. Um, 
The doily that I had over that doily. Extra there just to hold the bottom down for my so it's not flipping and flopping everywhere. Okay. And of course, a little bit of cheesecloth. I'm going to put it up here, sort of towards this center here. I'm sort of putting a lot because if I can get through the cheesecloth, then we'll glue our lemon down right on top of it. So we sort of have our orange on one side and our lemon on the other. This is our fruit page. There we go. I got my lemon real fast. So one thing I do like about Fabri-Tac is it so see, cute little lemon. You know what? I'm actually gonna put a little bit on the back of there just. Better safe than sorry. I love that little woman on there. I think it looks so cute. And it's just... And it looks perfect with like the yellow pitted down here and the orange on the other side. I got that pretty green on the inside just to add a little pop of color. Oh, and I have this. I need to look up. just gonna glue this right in the corner down here sort of coming onto the green and the music just a little flower in the corner just add a little pop of color and I actually thought We'll come in and I have this um, one that I tore off of here. So tear that across, ink it up. Add a little glue to it. Down at the bottom. Put a cute little flower moth and flower. And I'm just going to add a little pop of color to that corner. right on it so you haven't lost it all and you have all this here and you have all this sludging around here and you can right there so that's the inside it came out really pretty and then a lemon and orange on the outside so just go this way something like that so Got that, we're leaving. Our tree goes there, so we still have to finish that. There's our orange and our flower. Here's our wonder. It's gonna be wonderful. And This was the top of the, the one card that we had. And I'm just going to turn on the edges. Okay. 
well. And this was like the top part of that section where we cut it. And I'm going to put it here. Just made it crooked again. Yeah, that's gonna be covered up anyways. It's okay. Then have our little piece of our coffee dyed paper. I'm not worrying about it being straight. So we're trying to Like it layered like that. Then this is gonna be fun because there's a ton of little edges down here. This sort of goofy little looking flower. Okay. Cheese floss. I just got a really heavy stick of glue on here. That's like a little, a really heavy coat of glue and try to just do all this at once. And that's going to leave these sort of loose. I'm not going to glue them down. Okay. Get in here we need to sort of trim this up so it's not getting stuck in the spine. I should have scooted that over a little bit further. There's that. Okay, and then this side over here, I just want to do, you know what? Um, I'm going to grab the little piece of green that I have and sort of eyeball. This is the other piece that I have left over of that green. I'm going to put this and take it almost to the edge.
and then you know what I think I'm just gonna leave that like that and we'll see what we have over here oh that's sort of cute oh, I think I'm gonna I actually think I'll leave this just well I don't want to leave it just plain what do I have I have this I have my Nope, I like it better with the brown. I actually think I like this on there. I think it pulls out the outer edges better. Okay, let's see what we... I actually think I'm just going to ink this up and put this flat, which I don't do very often, but I think that actually... I don't want to take away from... I like how the torn edges really pull out on that paper. And then we have the back to do, and I think I'm going to use this. I just love how the tear roller does and when you ink it up, I just love the way it sort of has that burnt edged look to it. Um, this is our burnt edges or something that has that resemblance, I guess. this a nice journaling spot and there's this little bitty piece of cheesecloth over here that I'm just gonna put down here in the corner actually let's put it over here away from the spine or you know what let's put this up at the top Reminds me of my grandmother. Amazing old childhood. We always grew tons of tomatoes in the garden. My grandmother always had the biggest tomatoes. Of course, she had like just massive green thumb. Anything she could touch would just. And Kim's over there laughing because I lost the top of my glitter glue. Despite the fact that it's got beads that go on it. But I found it. I think I found it. Oh, that's a slight giggle on the road. How crazy. Well, thanks, Kim, for moderating the group. Helping keep us safe. We appreciate that. And keeping all those negative Nellies away. Let's put a little bit more glue on here just to make sure it holds a little better. And that really negative comments, I don't, I'm one that like, you know. I just don't want like people on there like trolling and causing issues. So there we go. That has the wonderful on the front. little page with some journaling page and if I'd have thought I'd have just glued that and left that a pocket but oh well that's what it is now and the little oh tomato on the back this is sort of a fruity vegetable 
Okay, and we have this page. We're leaving. We got our envelope on our page. We are going to go back and do something to that when we're doing our regular pages, but not right now because we're not actually adding anything. I'm just going to take um, my watercolor brushes and sort of, you know, put a little bit of color on the flowers. We have that. And that, the lemon looks great with the yellow in that one. Oh, and see, it's got cherries, so it was. Oh, and that's where our tree goes, and then we've got our back one. So, let me see time-wise what we're doing. Let me grab a drink of my tea. And let me grab this. Okay, so, it's dried. I wish you could feel it, because where we did the baby wipe and stuff at the bottom on the paper and even the top it actually gives it a texture it's really really weird so I'm gonna go around and ink and this is gonna create like almost like a faux burnt edge and then we're going to cover both sides with Mod Podge because It is watercolor, so technically, I'm not going to worry too much about that is over there, that bottom part. Is... Oh no, I'm not going to cover both sides. Yeah, I am. No, I'm not. Yeah, I am. Well, just so it doesn't leak and bleed through, in case if you have it in your journal, in your journal for some reason would get wet and I did get up over my thing. Let me grab a baby wipe and see if I can go in there. Let me see. I got so busy when I was doing that I wasn't paying attention. I should be able to go right in there and lift all that up or most of it at least. I guess it's good wiping up. See and that's why you know if you I don't want to rub my text off either though. Okay. Good enough. And then I'm gonna use my Mod Podge and this is our homemade Mod Podge we made. I'm just gonna whip it up because I haven't had the lid off of it for a little bit. And this is water-based, so you have to sort of it does okay. But you may have a little bit of like where it blends or stains or whatever you want to call it. Streaks. It will carry a little bit of the color. But by adding the Mod Podge on top of it, that'll seal the color in. So we don't have to worry about it. If it got wet after that, it's not going to leak and smear color into our journal. Because every once in a while, you may have your journal, maybe you're in the rain. <laughs> I'm trying to make it where it's not so thick I don't glued to my page either. Okay. I am going to pause the video and um, let this dry. It's not going to take very long and then we'll flip it over do the back and then we'll be back. Okay and I'm back and I had an issue with my camera so just bear with me. Um, 
I had Mod Podge the top, the front, and the back. Remember, we had the front. We flipped it. Was letting it dry. I flipped it over and did the back. And it's got a really nice texture and sort of the raised crisp. It sort of crisped the edges, so it has more of like a burnt paper feel, which I love. And then all I did, I haven't even done the back yet, so you'll get to see me do the back. Was I ran glue down the middle seam and glue on the back of this and then just glued it down to the page because I decided I wanted to glue it on the page instead of just having it flop because of how delicate it was because it is an older book page so but I don't know if you can see hopefully you can see like right here where it sort of creates so I mean I didn't go all the way up to the exact edge where it's completely flat I went as close as I could get but there's still some of these you know, like that, I probably could put a little bit more glue on because I don't want it to be loose where it's going to catch everything, if that makes sense. But I sort of wanted it where you could feel, you know, so it didn't look like, because oh, that looks really good. And then it's got the I Love Old Tree thing. And this is actually a calligraphy marker. And so this is all Mod Podge and everything now, but this will dry. So I just sort of want to go over the top with the black and I'm just sort of going to box that in just to sort of draw some attention because they're hey, with this tree, there's so much going on with this tree. Then, so all I did was I put one straight thing down the middle of the seam because I wanted to make sure it didn't like buckle there. And then I'm just, this is I just went around the outside edge like this, covered the little chunky feet, and then just sort of you know did our normal art glitter glue thing on the inside that is all I did and then just took it and folded it down like that and just very lightly just pushed it down so you have that really small so I mean that actually turned out halfway decent even though it was really small you fold it open so that's what it looks like I like it and you can see the text through it so let me lift it up so you guys can see yeah, I see the text through it so I'm happy with it so we have that page we have our orange and our flower did I miss a page? Nope, I guess not. We have our wonder, a little flower there, a little black and white, Ooh, so pretty. And we have our envelope. Yes. So we have this page here. Our tree page keeps it goes in here. Let's see. Right here is. This is that where our tree page goes? No. Okay, let's. Let's switch this around a little. Just because I don't want that so much well no that's okay because this is going to be here and this will be this way and then this way yes I was right I just flipped it backwards added the wrong way so then we got our tree tulip tree our tree because it goes really well we have our orange, 
slide that up a little bit. And our little flower. We got Wonder. A little flower. A black and white page. I love that. Again, our envelope. Flip over the back of that with our black and white. And again, I'm going to put um, one of the little ATC cards on there when they get to that part. And there's that. And the tomato. Small flower. The lemon page. The back of our tree. Sugar pie and stuff. The black lotus. And there we go. So, number two is done. We will be back to do number three next. So, you guys have a great day. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.